coffee club, coffee club. Grind your beans and grab your favorite mug. It's Ali Morgan, George and Gus. It's them boys from coffee club. Boys from coffee club. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Coffee Club Hi. podcast. <laughs> It is a hun- uh, episode 125, which I think we deserve a small pat on the back for that. And all the listeners as well, you guys deserve, you know, give yourselves a nice pat on the back or even, I don't know, a round of applause, whatever. We've made to another minor milestone. But today, uh, my name is Morgan McDonald, joined by co-host George Beamish and Oliver Hoare. And today we have Mr. Manager on the set. The big wig is here. The boys are in trouble. Tom Wang. Tom, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm, good. I'm happy to be here. Why are you here? Why am I here? Uh, Gus flew me in. Yeah, <laughs> you're just checking up on us, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, he he wanted me to get you know uh, things in order, and uh, I don't know if you heard. There's a rumor going around. Uh, I just want to dispel the rumors. Gus and I do have an inappropriate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've talked to HR though, and is that how you got the manager okay. job? Uh, well. <laughs> See when I There's walked details in, I can't talk about. Yeah, but when I walked in the kitchen and I saw Gus mounted on your leg, I thought that was just you know, I thought you guys were just having an argument. But. Yeah, well, I thought that was normal, but apparently, in a workplace, you know, after talking to each of you, yeah, it's not okay. <laughs> There's a bit of a power struggle, but yeah. um, Gus, Gus said we needed boots on the ground for the week. Yeah. yeah, so they had me in for the investigation. It's been a whole thing, but and we thought, why not kill? Two birds with one stone and have Two him on the show. Yeah. While he's getting investigated for yeah. sexual misconduct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. It's unclear who the victim is, but <laughs> I gotta talk to Gus about this to be honest. All right. I mean you also have a interesting <laughs> relationship with him. Yeah, he's my yeah. he's <laughs> boy, he's my son, but and he's also boss. my boss. <laughs> so it's like a weird into like There's y- some conflict about Usually just yeah. the other way around. Usually it's the dad. Yeah. That's the boss, but it's a anyway. weird dynamic. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> with that out of the way, we have a very exciting episode today with a ton of awesome track action this past week and some funny little tidbits coming out in the news cycle as well. Before we get into it, we do have a little bean, sh- well, not a bean shout out, a uh, 2.0 okay. version, a little correction, which we're sending that over to Tom. Tom, so the three of us, this is kind of our tactic for not being like, uh, what's the word, being able to hold responsible for anything. We, we don't really know what's going on most of the time. Tom is our guy who knows what's going on. So when we are unsure, we send it over to him and he gets stuff sorted out. And so we have a little small apology about one of our bean shout outs last week in a correction, yes. I guess. Uh, yes, big apology. Um, Madeline, uh, they were at, at the Miller's Games, there's a group of three and they called George over after the meet and they threw him down a wonderful bag of beans. And... I don't think you could actually talk to each other from that distance, from <laughs> the upper level of the armory to the ground. <laughs> we um, made it work. You made it work, but uh, there was an Instagram DM message that went into the coffee club Instagram that I didn't pass along. I said I would. Um, and it's a little bit of the context of the beans. And uh, yeah, so we just wanted to re-shout out Madeline Tanik and Matt uh, for throwing down the beans. The beans are from... Blanchards might be getting that wrong from Richmond, Virginia. Tannig and Matt, fun fact, used to run with George, run against George and back in the day. Back in the day. Back in high school. And and George remembers. George mentioned this separately. <laughs> I just want that on the record. And Madeline also on the record, a day one coffee club fan. So we that. just wanted to do you right, Madeline. Thank so, you guys. Yeah. It was a bag of beans and then that was the first bag. And then we got given another half dozen. And I yeah. can't remember which was when was which. That, you think that was the most beans, beans per meat we've. I think gone. so. Beans per capita. Yeah, beans highest per capita. Rate we've had. I'd say so. Yeah, that's good. That's, yeah, that's, that's a good day. That's a metric up. for growth. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about six. No, six, five or six bags. Yeah. So, once again, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for those beans and. Um, Madeline, I hope uh, you accept our sincerest apologies. Yes. And I also... <laughs> we'll do way, a better job next time. What reminded me was Madeline Tag Coffee Club Pod on Strava, which I get a notification every single time. Um, <laughs> so if you really want to get yeah, directly That's the to direct us. line to us, yeah. Strava. <laughs> Join the Strava group and tag it. Mm-hmm. 
So with that out of the way, we'll get into some of the track action. The big meet, which uh, happened this past weekend, was well. Actually, I guess every country had their national indoors. I was going to say USA's, but every country pretty much had their indoor championships. Minus you, ours, <laughs> not our countries, <laughs> unfortunately. We just had some some other random meets. Wouldn't that be crazy if that would be so <laughs> sweet if we had an indoor track? Okay, let me ask you guys this: Now that it's short tracks, could you not just? I guess it would defeat some of the purpose. But could you not just like have a cool like two hundred banked like outside? Somewhere? Isn't that isn't that why they changed the name? Because they have like is that the why? intention of like hosting street meets and stuff, just like building a temporary track. That makes so much sense. That'd be so sick. Sebco's looking into the future. Well, they probably want to like. I mean, the energy from short track meets. You know, like there's nothing as exciting. That's what as they should have done. But if you do it outside, it takes away a little bit. Right, but at least you could get. It's better. It's probably better than a four hundred meter track with one. With like only people sitting on, the or a five hundred meter track in Zurich because that <laughs> <thing> fucking <laughs> sucked. <laughs> what they should have they should have done a short track there on the edge of the lake, like beautiful Lake Zurich, yeah. short track outside. Instead, they made this put it on the lake. <laughs> even better idea. If you need track inspiration, just go to any no context. Like he posts it like once a week of all the weird tracks of the world. Mm-hmm. You ever see those? I like, like that the one shapes. in the forest. It's like it's like skinny at one end, and then it's like it looks like it's like a half mile long. <laughs> That'd yeah. be sweet. So yeah, maybe World Athletics is actually one step ahead of us in this case, and they've already thought this all through. But we'll go through a couple of them that had some good results. And USA's was close to us, I guess Spanish champs as well. But USA's, we had a couple of teammates out there representing. We were very excited to see Yard chopping it up in the three k, and uh, it was. A really entertaining race. I hope a lot of the listeners got to see it. Um, Coffee Club Track Club member Olin Hacker, he really like made it spicy, which was great to see. In the end, Yara did run away with a win in a round, I think was like 755-ish type times, which at altitude is is not bad at all. Um, Olin held on. He he went to the front, pushed it, and then Morgan Beetleskim came, I think, around him, and Olin came around him again to take second place, which was huge. We're still unsure if he is qualified for Worlds or not. Do we know? Ritz was very, like, pessimistic about it at practice the other day, which kind of annoyed me. Um, Apparently the final rankings come out tomorrow. Yeah, because he was like, oh, he's like, he's too down, he's like, too low on the Ritz. Like, yeah. there's like some list, uh, ranking list, he's like 15 people down or something behind Morgan, Beetlejuice, and Ritz was talking to Ronnie about it and was like more confident that Morgan would make the team, which makes no sense to me because Owen got second at the trial. At the, yeah. at it would only be if, if Owen doesn't, doesn't end up in the rankings, in, in quarter, the rankings or whatever quarter or whatever. whatever Unfortunately, whatever we, don't, we, we, don't, no we don't actually know how it works. It's, it's, a, it's more of like a wait and see kind of thing. I think Owen posts about on his social media and kind of said that like, oh, we'll just wait and see if I make the team. Um, but when you um, look at the list, though, there's so many people not <coughs> running it. Yeah. Exactly, which is why like, I think that he'll. I think like a he'll twenty Americans is even only, just is like not fi- in the three. Only fifteen people get to go. Yeah, I guess so cut in the whole world. Yeah, so that's pretty yeah. small list. Two per country, apart from Ethiopia, which will get three, three. for having the defending okay. champ. So I three Ethiopians, at least twelve. People from the rest of the world. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's not many, is it? It is not many. But that's why the standard was also so hard at uh, 734. So then I guess they fill up first, right? And then it would go to mm-hmm. ranking. Yeah. And then it goes next, to 5K ranking. Which is just, yeah, crazy. Also, system. very confusing. So Do you uh, know the biggest upset in that race? What was it? Yeah, I was pulling the, the bicep flakes instead of the finger guns. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that from Yard. 100%. When I was watching it, I was like, Wait, is Yard flexing right now? <laughs> yeah. Is that his first? That's his first That's flex? His first flex. His first yeah. flex? He usually yeah. has a finger like guns. A PR. He does the peace sign or the double yeah. thumbs up. He's never done the bicep. He before. always gives a really like wholesome smile after, yeah. which he did do again he did. as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very wholesome smile. Uh, I guess I should have mentioned it earlier. A big surprise kind of also was Abdi Noor. Yeah. He, we thought it was going to be a big Abdi Nervous. Yard battle with Abdi pushing it early. And he did try to do that, but not sure. He didn't quite have like the legs to go mm. to the front and like break open the field like he has done in the past in previous races. So or, like most of the field was able to stay in it. And mm. uh but yeah, it did result in a very exciting exciting finish in the end. So it's pretty sweet to watch. Yeah. yeah. Is what well, they run seven fifty five. Yeah, it converted to uh, NCAA conversion seven forty four. Mm. Would that make nationals? 
great question. Bro. Maybe not. <laughs> Probably right think, on the edge. I think it'd Maybe be very not close even. for Yarrod to make the NCAA national indoor championships with that time. So, yeah, and we have a Yarrod quote in the notes. Uh, Tom put this one in. Did he say this just today, or did he say? Yeah, this? he was just he was just talking about. It. I asked him how the meat was, and he said, "Abiquirky, <laughs> boring." <laughs> it was most of his recap. That place gets a lot of hate. Yeah, but he called it Albuquerque. Yeah. I mean, cool. it does get hate for good it reason, does. I reckon. Yeah, you, you think guys so? Are both being yeah, there. I mean, I went to Albuquerque. I mean, it was like we didn't race there, but it was... <laughs> almost ju- raced there. It almost raced there, and then COVID hit, and then everyone started freaking out, and then Mick Byrne gave me the ultimatum of like, you're either staying in this country or you're going home. Um, that happened in Albuquerque? Yeah, literally, he, literally Mick sits me down, <laughs> and like, <laughs> I'm still thinking I'm racing, and Mick just goes, yeah, um, <clears throat> you're not going to be racing. Uh, it's off. COVID's coming. You might have to think about either going home and spending time with your family or staying in America for the foreseeable future. You have 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty forward thinking of Mick to, yeah. at that point, and then be I aware of to stay. how serious the ramifications yeah. of everything was. I decided to stay in the US and I talked to my parents about it. But anyway. It was, funny that was the, it was funny that the Big Ten was the first conference to pull out. And so we th- we were like still, quite, like we were still racing at that point and they were going to be like 11 people in the mile like total <laughs> i remember it was because like, without the uh the big 10 runners big 10 runners yeah and then they would just like keep the field just keep getting smaller and smaller <laughs> not a fan of a cookie the uh the, the very first ones was harvard because yeah. i know it was everyone Crazy. was like how could you guys do this to them like because harvard was saying like their runners are not allowed to go and compete and everyone that was like they were just so far ahead that it was like Controversial makes sense for Harvard, and then and then everyone just like got on the same page. Yeah. Oh, they know everything. Yeah, (laughs) they know everything, Harvard. But I feel like Albuquerque. I just referenced Breaking Bad a lot. It's either like a lot of drug-related things around that area, and there's not much going on there. Josh Kerr lives there. Josh Kerr was at the meet. He said Yard said he's watching. Kerr was. Yeah, he's writing down. Checking out the competition. Yeah, he's writing down. I think he right after the race he he. Did he have a model shoot? Like, just UK, I'm doing it. <laughs> Did he have a model shoot at that the track? Is, that's my speculation. Tom? Was that? Did he have a model shoot at the track? Probably. Like, yeah. he's just waiting for everyone to clear the track so he could do some shooting yeah. for Brooks. Yeah. I'm yeah. actually also the best in the USA. That's yeah. kind of like his. Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm the best American if I was American. <laughs> <laughs> that's his quote. <laughs> but no, I, apparently the track's really nice, though. I remember doing strides in it. No, it's new, remember? Yeah, it's a really nice track. No, they, they, they like. Oh, they, they redid it. They got rid of their their old one was for sale. Remember, you could buy it. I didn't see that listing. I'm pretty. It was like a couple years ago. Say, we it that. was. It was literally Facebook like, Marketplace. <laughs> it was listed somewhere. It was like two hundred grand or something. That's and then, not a bad price for a track. Yeah. I think we should have bought it. Rich would have bought it and put it in his backyard. <laughs> I think we should have. And then I'm pretty sure they got a new one. Maybe they sold since it since we were there. Athletics <laughs> for outdoors. Yeah. If, if Coffee Club, if Gus purchased an uh, indoor track, where would he? Where would we put it? Could put it anywhere he wants. Yeah. Just move it around every day. Yeah, we should put it on the roof of the OAC gym. That'd It'd be, be on wheels. Yeah, that's what the, I mean. That's Traveling, uh, that's what the armory is. It's like isn't it like a second story? Oh yeah. So it's like above like all the main stuff, Multiple and then there's stories. the armory, and then there's another story. It's up there. It's up there. But yeah, that was the the men's three k, and then in the women's three k, we had Josette, who she ended up second. Which, I mean, is she more? Is she like? going is that confirmed for her or is it it's the same, same ranking thing, thing same thing with Ellen I think we just have to wait and see but I think she's more likely than really Colin. should have recorded the podcast tomorrow yeah when we <laughs> I think it'll probably come out news. and then by the time this actually comes out on Thursday everyone will already know from what I know from Ritz which is not much is that Josette's more likely to get in than Ellen <laughs> that that's what he told I, me I, no, that's no, what Ritz yeah. told me when you that's look bad. at road to Glasgow like Josette's way higher up yeah. on the that's like, what Ritz told me in the US like 5k 3k thing she's mm-hmm. a lot closer but yeah, another amazing dominant performance by ESP out the front, getting it done as well. Just yeah. pulling away from the field, running a pure puree a time, is so. crushing it right now. Yeah, yeah, healthy puree. And then the fifteen hundreds, Nikki Hills getting it done. Nikki loves to win indoor nationals, so it was it was. I mean, three peat or three total, three in a row indoor, outdoor, indoor. Okay, third total, I think. <clears throat> yeah, that must give them confidence, surely. <laughs> Like, it's not easy to win a US champ. That was also once. a pretty fast race. If we... I don't remember how that one played out. The games. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Made. No, that was honest. It was it very was. honest. Very honest. So that was a good race. And then still what, had what to kick Nikki's hard. What was time? 4.08. 4.08. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is, that is very plus high altitude. Conversion must be pretty close to four minutes. Or Would that make nationals? Five. Yes. Yes. That make That's nationals. almost, yeah. That's, That's pretty good. That's pretty fast. And then... So that was... Yeah, they know how to win races. Yeah. That's for sure. Mm. And the men's race was super exciting because there's just like so many bodies in there and what's our nickname? Hulk Cocker. Hulk Cocker. Yeah. Getting it done over Hobbs Tesla. Mm. And I mean, the funniest, I don't know if you guys saw this, the funniest thing was just Hobbs crossing the line and then like two, three seconds later, just yelling, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Which, That's such good <laughs> camera work on it. If you watch the race, um, Wait, sorry, I just thought of this. See, George, if you had followed the rest of the field, you would have missed him seeing, saying fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, it's the funny. Oh, wait, can okay. we talk about the split screen? No, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about the split screen at this meeting. It was excessive for some of it. Did, mm, did I they, don't know if everyone had finished by then. I'm you're trying right, to decide. You're right. Because yeah. <laughs> right. it was very bunched. It was. So they probably all had oh, finished yeah, at that it was, point. It's a blanket it was finish. Cool. Yeah. But. Uh, well, Cole actually a blanket destroyed finish. Them. <laughs> a blanket, blanket finish for from, else. from two to twelve, Cole, yeah. it was a blanket finish. But, but Cole, Cole convincingly won it. But Hobbs, a hundred percent, you can like if you watched his race, you were like, yeah, I can see why he yelled that afterwards yeah. because it was you just watching that race, you can see how much tactics, I mean tactics, luck, whatever you want to say, play into it, in especially in indoor fifteen hundred because just so hard to make moves with those turns coming at you in the way that they do and how wide you got to go and Cole was just positioned perfectly behind the leader and then he made it an inside pass and just he he probably ran like as close to 1500 meters as you could whereas Hobbs was having to make these moves around the outside to try to get up and uh it was a really good race between him and I think was a Vincent Chiardi um towards the end Chibata. it was but it ended up being Henry Wynn Henry Wynn was coming ended through. up third yeah. I think but Vince was in then that tier then Vince Vince was in that spot so Henry Wyoming <laughs> and Vince <laughs> Uh, Chibata. They went 3 Chibata. 4. <laughs> so okay. the, the two, f- what was crazy was that all 12 guys had the standard. No, so no, you look no down matter the results, they all, yeah, they no all. No matter what, the top, yeah. t- top two were going to Glasgow, yeah, which yeah. would make us, make a lot simpler for us idiots that don't know the ranking system. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone, it ended up, everyone, everyone, everyone in the race had the standard. Yeah, but the yeah. two the two favorites ended up prevailing, even though Hobbs almost blew it. Yeah, real simple. But Cole looked really good. Cole, he did. Was he, it, had, he had a good interview afterwards too. I liked it. Did you? Yeah, he, say? he just talked about how like I think he's had a lot of disappointment. He doesn't like getting second and third, but then he realizes like he's running against world champions, American record holders. Like he's running against good competition, and for him, it's about like taking those steps forward to where he believes he should be. So, winning an uh, indoor sh- American, I was about to say Australian indoor American champs is a good step for him in that direction because like his competition is three forty three mile, and also like. A lot of the races he's running against, he's running against the guys that are winning world championships. So it was, it was a cool reflective um, interview. And the one thing that I always forget about um, Hulk Cocker is that he's fucking young too. Like Hobbs, you know, like they're both young guys. So it's didn't they? Cool how old is he? Cool. He's a little bit older than Hobbs, but is he twenty twenty three? Yeah, right. I think he's younger than Yared. He's younger than Yared, I think. Cause, they cause did he say was, it. he was a junior or a sophomore when he beat Yared at Eugene. He might even. I think he's younger than that. It was ridiculous when they said it. Two maybe. Yeah, Hobbs 2001, 20. so 22. 22 to 23. Like going on 20, yeah, 20. Jesus, these youngins, man. What they the hell? So, yeah. old. so, like, it's pretty cool to see him develop as an athlete, like too. his senior year. Cause he, his he went year. pro pretty, what, he went pro in his junior year? After two years, I think. Yeah. I'm not certain but, um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. The two top guys in the American uh, 1500 going to Glasgow are 20 and 22, right? It's mm-hmm. pretty young. Mm-hmm. Pretty young. So it's yeah. cool to see. Future is bright for the US middle distance. No, they've come through super strong. So. Yeah, definitely. Ollie's really changed his tune on <laughs> American 1500 run. Right? I mean, <laughs> they've gotten a lot better. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You know what's they happened, have. George? They've listened to me. They've listened mm, to me. They've listened that, to the podcast. Maybe that's it. They've yeah. listened to Ollie and they said, you know what, Ollie, you're, you're right. We've got to step up. <laughs> We've got to step up. We've seen these, you know, Stuart McSwain's and. Every and, race, uh, they're Josh just trying Jones. to prove you wrong. We've seen all these other people. I mean, everyone's trying to do that all the time. But we've seen all these people like just go out and cross races, Jake Whiteman. You know, it's nice to see that. You know they they're getting after it. You you're, made you're, you're making a real you're making a real difference in the sport. Oh, I don't should, think you I, should be I, proud of that. I think I'm just some guy. I'm just <laughs> guy. I think the bit, the person that's making the most difference in this sport is probably um probably Josh Carrot and and Jingy. Surely, those guys are definitely creating a good uh, good banter environment, as they say, in the middle distance world. And hopefully, US can stick their nose in it a little bit, get a bit of coal banter in there. Maybe some Yarrod. Like I don't know. I'm just here to have fun. 
comment. I don't know, something like that. Fur. We we could we could. I mean, that is a good segue into into some Josh Kerr talk, which was it kind of seemed like you were being sarcastic, but it was actually like kind of accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Kermit. <laughs> well, he was he was at the uh, the American Championships from our inside sources. <laughs> he was waiting for people to get off the track so he could do his model shoot for Brooks. That's what he was saying. He's like, wow, these people at my home track. I'm the best runner in the they, US. I should be able to model on my track if actually, I need to. I saw it actually on the split screen. There was a screen in the top left corner yeah. of the race. It was the Josh what Oakley's, what Oakley's was he wearing? In the top, in the bottom right corner of pole vault. And in the triple? bottom little Triple corner split was, screen? Was Josh. He had his own little corner. <laughs> little corner. Did yeah. they have a little of velvet rope? SATF. Velvet rope with the, with, the, with the Oakley glasses? So this yeah. is the... This I wish I had that. So they shit, heard man. what I was saying last week about a split screen with Josh. Yeah. And so they said, all right. Yeah. We'll have a split there were champions with, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We we'll have a split screen with Josh, Josh the entire the meet. Split, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a world champ. We'll have him on there. Just sitting in the stands. Josh, yeah. I think I think day two had like the NBC proper coverage. But day one, they, they broadcasted it through uh, USATF Journey to Gold. <laughs> I believe that's what it's called, <laughs> and it was had. It was so. It was so frustrating because it was. Yeah, we always ask for a split screen, and then they give us a split screen, but they didn't. I don't know if there's any way of doing this. They didn't like zoom in on the distance races, so or the track races in general. So that there was like, yeah, two field events going and the track races, but it's just so small on the side <laughs> of the yeah. screen. That's like the view that you had to watch it. No, yeah, it was a it was a square and then corner to corner, and yeah. then there's. <laughs> Fifty percent of the real estate and blank then space just blue. The just bottom, background. no, Nothing. the bottom. Actually, yeah, the bottom, the bottom had and results. the side was both like results. Results. <laughs> that was like the actual field for the stimmy station. Man, it was just so small, it was so hard to see. But I had to get the binoculars out. Like a majority of the screen just completely wasted. Nothing. No, it said UCA, USATF journey oh, to gold, there, which is very important. To yeah, get. that's not wasted space, <laughs> Tom. Come right. on, <laughs> I remembered the name. So I'm on the worked. journey now. <laughs> <laughs> it worked, but yeah, uh, that was it. Was a good attempt. <laughs> they tried. Just need some. Just need some fine tuning. Yeah. Maybe there. just one of them big and one of them small, and then just switch. You know, when the attempt starts, you can switch. Because yeah, the thing, the reality back. is, track event goes for in the case of a uh, fifteen hundred, four minutes. Field events, two hours. Mm. Yeah. You know, but you, you guys so you remember, it's, it's a journey to gold. They haven't reached their destination yet, so they're still working on things. All right. <laughs> Jesus. Once it's that's why it's a metaphor. The alternative metaphor. is NBC Gold, and that had better coverage. That had better coverage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they've already hit the um, destination. The they're already at the gold, whereas uh, USA is still having that journey. I feel simultaneously. Well, I don't feel bad really, but I feel <laughs> I feel very warm in my heart when I when I want to watch a track meet that I don't want to pay for, and then I go into the Discord, and there's like 30 people in there watching someone's live oh, stream. It's more, <laughs> it's more than that. Like when there's a live stream, like hundreds of people tune in. Yeah. Like they fill up the... Like that I've never seen before. Yeah. Is this how you were day, watching it? All yeah. I, did you, did you I, hear I was like, no way Morgan has run a space. <laughs> no, I watched it on my Discord. Did you hear what um, Jordan Donnelly did? With uh, some... I think it was on employees or something like that. What did he do? He went on the on our Discord to watch... The mate, because they couldn't watch it. No, they were like they're executives in the industry yeah, and in they the couldn't sport, and they couldn't find. They the couldn't stream. find the stream, so, so he, he went on our Discord, Discord to watch it for the executive. Yeah. Whoever we're, is we're making a real difference. Whoever <laughs> is the person that is like has paid for it and is streaming on the Discord, you're just such a hero. You're 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 like literally a hero. We we did take care of a bunch of people last year that stream. We sent merch, but if <laughs> nice. I'll try to keep an eye out for who's who's new or if you are. A streamer on our Discord. Uh, <laughs> we'll give you some love. Me a message, yeah. We'll give you some love. So that's. Is there anything else from USA's that was exciting? Noah Lyles got the got a big dub over mm. Coleman, which was pretty mm. cool. If you're into the 60 meters, which I'm not. <laughs> what Honestly, can we do? We do we think there's a Ollie's theory is that there's a clause in sprint contracts that stops them getting world record bonuses at altitude. And well, that's why. Why it's, would it's they? It's a theory. It's not like why would it's you, not proven. I've never seen a contract. Why, why would they not all go to Flagstaff? We had cash in all these yeah. world record bonuses because what like, don't recognize. Like they're, they're, they're all okay. at Milrose last week in New Balance, and then a week later they're now week again. Suddenly they're running. They're running fast. so fast, and it's like, oh my god, they've got so good in the last week. It's I, like well, I doubt that clause is in there. I think it's just so hard to. But you still have to be really good to yeah, you to do it every record. time they go. But that's like that's like you particularly like if you had Jakob say for example in distance running, if you had an altitude conversion, it would count as a world record. Then like if I was Jakob or Josh, I would try and run at Albuquerque and just run like a ridiculous two mile a mile and get that world record. I'm sure you, you would do conversion. that. Mm -hmm. But that's it like might, it might be like a uh, wind aided, like 
it could be like asterisk. Like it's not going to go in a record book. I don't. I know. think I it, does, we should fact no, check. it does. It does. No, what they like they they announce it? it. You're, not, you're not allowed to have a tailwind, but you're allowed to have the advantage of running it's altitude. altitude yeah. Which is like the same thing. Like they run so, so fast. When George and I had this had this discussion, I was saying maybe in their contracts there's like some sort of world record clause where they like say like your, your world record has to be set not at altitude or not like no aid mm -hmm. from altitude. I don't even know if Grant had to run because he didn't run the final because he's got a f free mm -hmm. pass into Worlds. Yeah. Runs a prelim, world record, cashes a check, doesn't run the final. But I think <laughs> I so off, to, crazy. off to Glasgow. That's so crazy. But they do that. He's done that at outdoors as well. Mm. He has. So yeah. I think that's just a no, he's probably going to do that no matter what. I wonder what. what the indoor world record bonus is for his contract for Grant because surely he's fucking hit that like 17 <laughs> times. Yeah, hasn't he got like 29 like, of I think he's unbeaten. Times? I think he's unbeaten in 60 meter. For like a long time. For a very long time. Years. Since like he was like one years old, I think. Yeah, I think since mm. he could walk. <laughs> he's, he's never been beaten in a 60 be, We have to get a sprint run to ask him that question because yeah. my immediate thought is like that probably doesn't exist, but maybe brands are smart and they do that. I just think the athletes just couldn't be bothered going to altitude mm. to do it. I mean, I'd be bothered if I was going to get a fat paycheck. For a world or record, like an yeah. Olympic standard, or yeah. well, there's, there's got to be something. So I can tell you this: they do do it for Olympic standards because there's I know people that not to expose them. They go to the track in Sierra Nevada in long jump to get standards. Mm -hmm. Like people do it, really. So it is a thing. Just maybe like people do do it. Like, it. Morgan, are we bringing US up your long jump in. career? Or yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> I may I may have qualified for <laughs> <laughs> nationals in the long jump before by going to Sierra Nevada. <laughs> That's a no brainer. Like if we, we don't I don't know, know what the what the distance equivalent. Like if there was like a knit downhill, <sighs> let's go to the downhill road race. That for some reason they just let us run. Mm. Like yeah, okay, we'll go do it. Can we go below sea level? Yeah, we we'll go to the. Where's that? Atlantis. So well, that's why they, that's why they're doing that, like <laughs> the Red Sea or something. Yeah, we'll just fucking set up some sort of base in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, that's where guests want to move that track. Actually, <laughs> yeah, below. <laughs> How much of an the Great Barrier Reef would that even give you? I wonder. I don't know. I wonder if that would actually work. That's a great thought, though. We need to get that checked. Mm. It'd be hard to breathe because of the water. <laughs> <laughs> we can work around that. We can we'll, problem we'll solve that. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. That's a that's a minor issue. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a big issue for us. Well, I'll pass it. Uh, research. That's my only other take from USA. Take, though. Yeah. It is crazy how fast they can run. But yeah, so I don't know. Is there any other champs that we want to talk about? Um, uh, the UK fifteen hundred meters. I'd love to talk about that. Super with, exciting with uh with foggy, foggy doggy YouTube battle. <laughs> YouTube battle. <laughs> big, big YouTube. Battle. Honestly, right. it's one of those <laughs> it's one of those finishes you watch where you just would never get tired of it. What's one, of those, one of those split ones. Yeah. Someone on each side couldn't defend both sides. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of, sorry, I always forget the name of the other. Callum Elson's? Callum Elson's. Distance Project. Distance Project. Coffee Club fans. Yeah. They came up <laughs> we met Riga. them. We yeah. met them in Riga. <laughs> That's yeah. really. Yeah. Really nice guys. Yeah. yeah. He has like a full dedicated cameraman who's like on it. Mm. Charlie. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, he's so really cool. good too. It, it is cool to see. I mean, I don't know if we're the exact audience. But like, imagine if you've been imagine if you're a younger kid and you've been watching either him or Fog Dog for like two or three years at this point, and then they're running like three fifty in the mile now. Like that's pretty. That's sick. pretty sick. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's how I feel when I watch Team Ingebrigtsen personally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's like a you like feel very invested. A, yeah. It's like making a character in like NBA Two K, like my player, and watching them <laughs> like slowly chip away and yeah. build up, and now they're just world class. It yeah. ended up being just a a win win for YouTube though, because the two YouTubers yeah. were selected. Right. Oh, they, really? they didn't select yeah because the that. first guy didn't have a YouTube channel. Pierce Copeland, <laughs> man, get a YouTube channel, otherwise you're not making <laughs> any the UK yeah. teams. They bro. said they said they yeah. couldn't well, select UK, him. UK, nothing, nothing to do with the standard. It was just because yeah. he didn't have a YouTube. UK Athletics <laughs> needs the money, and where do you think they're going to get a lot of that advertisement from? You <laughs> Google, know, Google advertising. Good advertising <laughs> yes. for them. They, need, they don't they don't have a budget to pay for advertising, so they need these YouTubers. The YouTube Partner Program is also the World Athletics Partner. Program. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. There's another page road to, like. Road there's to, road there's road a drop down on the road to Budapest, road to Oregon, road to Paris, and it's like YouTube channel subscribers, and that's really why we do this. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to bump those numbers. Yeah, yeah. there's auto cues, yeah. but yeah, we should give a shout out to Piers Copeland as well for mm. coming through on the inside and getting a really exciting dub. It was sick to see. Um, so he doesn't get he doesn't go though. No, because he doesn't have the standard. Tough. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah, that's heartbreaking. Mm. If I'm that guy. But he seemed pretty happy with the dub. That's a, that was a big win for him. Did you guys see the finish at the Irish 1500-meter champs as well? No, I did uh, not. It was uh, Cathal, Cathal I, I don't know how to pronounce Irish names, Cathal Doyle. Uh, 
I'm friends with them, but I don't know how to say it. Verse. We'll get Carl Marbury. Is it, you know, the really good young one, Griggs? Griggs. Yeah. Griggs. Yeah. He ran like the European cross. Yeah. That yeah. one. They like literally had, it was just them two side by side, lost a hundred meters and Cathal got it done with a dive at the line. They both dove. Really? <laughs> both of them dove. Really. Both hit really. the ground? Yeah. Both hit the ground. Oh, both yeah. laid there for like yeah. Putting the body seconds. on the line for the dub. Love so to hear it. Do it they, is, are they going to Woods? I don't know if they understand it, <laughs> but it was sure. a great. Who's the other guy that's got the really good eyebrows? Uh, them? I know who you're talking Andrew about. MTC. Corscreen. Andrew Corscreen. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't in the. He wasn't in the race. In the race? Okay. I don't think so. I don't know, but uh, back to British champs. Sorry, Kerr was not in the three k. Actually, James West won the three k. Mm. Shout out to him. Defended his title from last year, I believe. But big news that was announced was it today. Or yesterday? I, think I was sometime today or yesterday. This yeah. morning. It was it was this on morning. my flight. Hot off the press. Yes. Kerr has announced that he is running the 3K in Glasgow, which, where is it, it is Glasgow? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, pretty fucking sick because he was yeah. being really teasing everyone this yeah. hot for the past three months if he's going to do it or not. And yeah. That's my theory. It. It, Morgan believes in him, but I'm thinking maybe he <laughs> all along intended on running. He just wanted this big reveal two weeks out. Because now we're all talking about it. It's worked or out pretty well for him. It has worked out really well. It's annoying. Isn't he, isn't, he, isn't, he, isn't he Scottish? Isn't mm-hmm. he from Glasgow? No. Or like Edinburgh. that's like a home. Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. well, it's still home. Home. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Home away from home. You know. So that'd be exciting for him. I mean, it'll be huge. It'll be one of the hardest races. I mean, the, at the fifteen hundred will be harder, but this three k field is going to be so amazing. As Jordy would say, it's going to be legendary. <laughs> Gonna be legendary. Pastor, and he was just telling us this morning that running indoors in Glasgow is the loudest meet he's ever run it in his life. Really? Or yeah, like most hype crowd or something. Yeah. First time he's like thought he had to like cover his ears in a stadium or something. Damn. I've never so thought that way <laughs> before. Yeah. <laughs> I've never walked <laughs> in a stadium be like, how my ears? <laughs> Maybe that was someone in the stands told him that. So. We'll see if that um, brings true. But that's the thing. He might have had a lot of fans there. Like, you know, a bit yeah, different for other people. more than Josh Kerr will have. <laughs> yeah. A bit yeah. different for other people. But. No, but that's pretty sick that he is actually doing it. Because I feel like there will be a lot of Scots. Oh, yeah. They'll be going crazy for him. They'll they'll be loving it. I mean, he's, I don't know. I mean, he's based in America, but I feel like he polls pretty well back home. I'm just saying that based off nothing. <laughs> he, he was just on, those yogurt commercials. He was on yogurt <laughs> containers for a while. He was on what? Yeah. On yogurt containers. Yeah. Him and Whiteman and um, Laura, Muir Laura Muir gets some good. Mm. She's Scottish as well, right? Yeah, she she's, is. She gets all a lot all of she's pretty running. much all the good runners in the UK are from Scotland. Well, he's also been in the newspaper once a week for the past <laughs> 15, 16 weeks. Really? <laughs> What's this world? He's been doing an interview. It's oh, a, yeah. A, mm. He gets brought up between him, Whiteman, and you know, Jakob. You know UFC? Like they have like the pre meet where they have the two um, athletes come in and they talk shit to each other. Yeah. They like should do that yeah. with Jakob and Josh. I thought you were going to say with Yared and Josh in Glasgow. No, should we, ever, we should have a weigh-in. Yared can <laughs> be the <laughs> surprise third guest that comes in, but he's just on his switch and he's not paying attention. Yeah. And then you have like Kerr like acting a bit like Conor McGregor, got the f- your furry coat, the glasses. Ooh, d- th- do you think he is a Conor McGregor a little bit, of you know? He kind he of tries is. to be for sure. And then you got like freaking Jakob coming in, like very serious, probably a couple of new tattoos, a few more piercings. Um, is is brothers. Jakob serious though? I feel like he's I joking. Don't know. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I feel like he's not serious. I mean, yeah. not as serious as Josh. I feel I like, like Jakob's like, I, do you think, who do you think is winning the mental battle here between Josh yeah. and Jakob? Who do you think is actually winning this battle? Because I think Jakob is kind of maybe winning. Maybe. Oh, I have a good question. I vote Jakob. His, I his, vote Jakob. Because whoever's I translating his quotes <laughs> is is great for it. <laughs> it's it's mis- mistranslating everything he it's says. Because so so we, did, we didn't get to the latest quote yeah, last we week. Gotta, do you want to say what it was? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it written? What, I don't want to mess it up. Well, I don't have was the exact it? quote. I just okay, have the, I could have. I could pull up in response exactly. to Josh running eight minutes at Milrose, he said, I could have beaten him by. I could have won that race blindfolded. <laughs> he did. He did say though it's great to see his competitors getting better mm. because it's he's great. very patronizing. So he, yeah. so he <laughs> doesn't have to run alone anymore. Yeah, he's like saying that's good for this. It's good for like him that his competitors are running. Yeah, but better. he's saying it as a joke, no? I think he is. <laughs> I. It's for the thing. The ninety-eight other time, out of a hundred other we've, times. We we're, we're personal friends with Jingy. We've had him on the podcast. He he answered the call with a freaking disco globe. We know we know he's got a bit of <laughs> bit of spunk. You're at his freaking honeymoon. I mean, yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> 
but I, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't want to bring that up. Like that's, you know, that's a bit of a personal thing. But Sorry. like in general, you know, we're close to him. We, we we're tight. I, I do think he's winning the battle a little bit because I think Josh is much more serious about it, and Jakob's kind of just like poking the bear a little bit. That's my assumption of it. I could be wrong. Like this I is know, my do- uh, thing for Josh. Sorry right. to cut you off. Go for it. I think Jakob just on kind of paper and not I mean Josh is literally the world champion I think Jakob is like such a bigger entity yeah and Josh by what he's doing is bringing himself up to that entity Jakob yeah you mm. know what I mean so even if Jakob is overall winning I think Josh is gaining more potentially with yeah. with social media I need to check this right now actually I want to see Josh Kerr's following see if it's increased a lot <laughs> because <laughs> no this because in general with like with, we know like Jakob's probably like the one of the biggest followed distance runners on social media so i want to see if like josh is gaining a lot because i know like for whiteman he was pretty i feel like whiteman was pretty chill when he won world champs like not crazy but i think josh is really elevated like well josh said. like two years ago didn't have a very big social media presence even when he was doing the sit and kick podcast like not a massive mm. social media presence for how good he is at running well, jake went is. jake went the youtube route instead of the mm. modeling no, <laughs> social media honestly route. not as not as big as i thought it would be what are we 61.5k for Josh. It's pretty good. Let's see Jake Whiteman. Fuck. Yeah. So well, he's got like 10, 12, 13 Jake Whiteman has now. more followers. <laughs> wow. Jake Whiteman has more followers. And he's 60, definitely 60, trying less hard. Wow. That surprised That's me. Cool. Maybe, yeah. you know, that that could be a product of him being based in the UK. I think you get, mm. uh, if you're, I think if you're a world champ and you're based in your country, Jacob you get so much Ingebrigtsen, love. Guess how, guess how much. He's actually gone up. Like 120? No, he's like, isn't he like 400? 551k. 551k. Approaching that 10 million. And remember, remember his, remember his quote. He said, "I could have like four or five million followers, but I choose not to be an influencer. I choose to be a." Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I I could be totally wrong here, but it sounds like every time Josh says something about Jingi, it doesn't sound like a joke. He's like talking about his race strategy or his psychology. And every time Jakob talks about it, it's like, She's so oh, like <laughs> blindfolded. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. It always seems funny when it comes from from him. Like right. the thing is, say, let's take that comment, for example. Like Josh could never say that to Jakob. Only Jakob can mm. say that to people, it's a, yeah. which means something. Yeah. I don't know what it means, mm. but it means something. It means that he has the um, the territory, I reckon, like that territory of... He's got that what, territory. What, what is Jakob? Because when, when people like, this is the thing, right? Josh Kerr runs that. Who do people want to go and ask about that race? They don't go to Yarrod. They go to Jakob. Jakob has that territory of like, what do you think of this? And he's like, oh, you know, I could do that blindfolded. Yeah, I'm just impressed at how many interviews he seems to be doing. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's really just letting loose. He's just busting Jingy? them out. Yeah, <laughs> it's like one a week at least. Both of them. <laughs> yeah, Josh Kerr as well. There's just all these funny little tidbits that come out. Uh, this is like a real aside or a, a weird connection, but... Josh Kerr was also, he had some really good comments about Moketeer stuff. They, they asked him about, I think it must have been after Milrose. And one thing that I picked up on, which was really interesting, and I do want to get more into Josh Kerr's post-race interviews that we didn't talk about, about his employees and stuff, because it's so funny. But he said that he wakes up at 5 or 6 a.m. Did you guys see that? Who, Josh? Jingy? Yeah, that. Or Josh? Josh. Josh. For his whereabouts. He said, I normally, set my where- I normally set my whereabouts when I wake up, which is usually 5 or 6 a.m. That's crazy. As what a professional runner, <laughs> I would love to know that. Yeah, it makes mm. no sense to wake up that early. He has an employee to sleep for him. <laughs> <laughs> How many employees did he say he had? I think five to six. What are they doing? They have food. He has. He has a personal chef. Food. Social, Social media. media. You, there's there's two food because there's chef and nutritionist. Chef. Okay, so that's three. Probably psychologist. Dave Four. counts. Who's Dave? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Dave Ribich. Is is Danny Mackey one? Danny Mackey. Like, is he, he probably counts him. Could be, could what's, be. The CEO of, what's the CEO of Brooks? What's his name? <laughs> probably <laughs> works you. for Josh as well. Us as well. We're on his payroll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, we're for giving him the amount of exposure we give him. <laughs> the, the real winner are our fans. Uh, well, the problem is Jakob didn't, Ray, didn't check us the other payroll. day. So <laughs> we had to like look for a new payroll. Yeah. Because Jakob hasn't been paying us recently. We haven't been talking about him as much. So we moved to Josh. That, he's been paying I us think more. the quote you're referring to, I'm guessing, is the, the million dollar quote. Which from the post race interview what it was what ridiculous. Was it? He said, "If a, if I spend a million dollars, if I make a million dollars and I spend a million dollars, but I end up with a gold medal, then it's like a successful year." Uh, it's like the LeBron I James. That. I think he's maybe uh, the, the para. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like taking a page out of LeBron's book. 
Yeah, I mean, that was kind of a ridiculous post race interview. Who says that? Yeah, no one says that. LeBron James, bro. This LeBron, isn't yeah. this isn't pay to win, bro. Come on, this isn't a video <laughs> game. <laughs> you can't just buy. You can't just buy the medal. Yeah. Maybe you can. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can actually. Yeah, maybe yeah it's, wor- it's working pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing uh, good. I uh, really hope that means that he's spending hundred percent of his income right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's what that means. That'd be pretty boring. I mean, isn't that what that means? Text free. Yeah, I, yeah. Guess. <laughs> I mean, the, the reality is, hundred. As I think, all of us, as fellow pro runners, would if we were big enough entities, yeah, I'd take on more employees mm-hmm. if it made sense. I would hire a chef if it made sense. I'm not a big enough entity, unfortunately. No, <laughs> working my way there. Yeah, I mean, when you've won an Olympic medal and a world championship, I think you can start to move into. But that there's a lot of people that probably have done that that don't then go and hire a bunch That's of staff. True as well. Yeah, like, yeah, it takes a. Do you reckon that type of saves person? them a lot of money? Surely it does. No, <laughs> fuck no. Well, you don't think it saves them a lot why, of money? How would it save them money? You, spend you don't have to money. spend like five or six p- on employees. You can just like spend Wait. them yourself. Wait, which Wait. thing are you saying? Yeah, what are you saying? I'm saying that like, for example, okay, look at these two world champs, right? You got Jake Whitecastle and Josh uh, Kermit. So Jake Whitecastle doesn't have like six employees, probably, right? Let's just say that as like a base, right? He's probably saving more money than 100%. Josh Kermit, right? That's 100%. what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. But then, like, White Castle could still beat Kermit. Um, could. Because, like, White Castle's an amazing athlete, has his shit down pat, makes his food. That's what George is saying. That, He's yeah, saying you don't, I mean. have, you don't have to spend the money. That, that's what I mean. Is in, like, I think, like, maybe for Kermit, this is how he can stay at that best level. Whereas, like, White Castle might not need that. But Kermit does, you know? We'll see what happens, I, I guess. guess. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I guess you'll never really see because you could just always say, like, Kerr would probably run really well regardless because he has in the past. Yeah, he's always turned up for championships. But I do love the business mindset of it. I really like it mm. from, from that standpoint. Invest in yourself. I think, mm. Ollie, you just have to beat them. <laughs> Me? Yeah. You. Well, I can't wait to write my biography about it. The ho- it's going to be called The Whore and what would your f- What would your first employee be? My first employee? Yeah. Uh, I would hire Stephen King <laughs> <laughs> to write to write my autobiography not. and then just turn it into like a rabbit hole of like some random fucking story. I mean, but they, a horror I story. Think <laughs> horror story that's, yeah. that's really sm- they're not thinking big enough. Like <laughs> yeah, <not>. their legacies, <laughs> you know, records get erased. Okay, people I want to talk about medals, but people always buy books. I want to talk about this um, <laughs> with you, Wom Tang, because it was my birthday recently, and I saw a particular company wished me a happy birthday. Um, and that would be a company that I would work with if I had the same kind of, uh, if I was the same entity as, as Kermit and White Castle is like Mountain Dew. I would just like, but on like, you know how Usain Bolt had his own flavor of, uh, Gatorade? Yeah. Did the he? whole flavor yeah, the of whole Mountain flavor. Dew. <laughs> yeah. I We're think hundred percent, like, I don't know why, especially that haircut. Like that just tells me Mountain Dew. I don't know why. Like I can uh, probably see probably because of. I think it's the artificialness <laughs> of it. It's because of Ninja. The same stuff that went. The same stuff that went into your hair. George. They put in Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, because extra flavor. Yeah. I can. I can. I think there's also see bleach it. in Mountain Dew. So, <laughs> isn't it just a no-brainer? Yeah, but only a small amount. Isn't it just a no-brainer for like really unhealthy companies to sponsor like athletes? Like really high performing athletes. Well, there's three sponsors I want. Yes. I want <laughs> actually. I want DoorDash. I want. Um, Mountain Dew. KFC is a big sports sponsor. And then <laughs> I sense. want um, VB. Yeah, which mm. is a which is a beer Australian beer brand. But nice. But that like if when I when I win the uh, ten thousand meters in Los Angeles by sitting and <laughs> kicking on on um, he's caught it now the ten k. Caught it now the ten k. Twenty twenty eight. Twenty twenty eight. I sit and uh, kick in in LA. Then I'm just gonna cash out and all those things. Yeah. 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 So Tom, please work on that. Yeah, it's it's in, yeah. All right, I can't talk about it, but and then yeah, I'll set up a Gus, uh, a Gus like a uh, meet and greet business. Mm-hmm. So like you can meet and greet Gus. You can see him for five hundred dollars. You can touch him for a thousand. Like that, as in pet him. <laughs> Just a business business ideas business, left, right, and center yeah, here. Exactly. So we tangent- tangentially talked about it in that quote. What does that word mean? I don't know, but that was. <laughs> That was Kerr res- <laughs> responding to uh, some stuff about Moketeer. And maybe we should touch on the Moketeer updates as well, which literally came out, I think, the day after we recorded last week's episode. So we just missed it. But he is choosing not to appeal anymore, which once you go through the, the documents or whatever it is, you can see why he's not appealing it because all three of his missed tests or filing failures, whatever you want to 
refer to them as just not good excuses, mm. unfortunately. Well, unfortunately for him. I mean, it was a shocker, wasn't it? Yeah. It really was. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things where, like, it's been brought to our attention and everyone's always had this susp- suspicion with Kit Kat Katir. But uh, if you look at certain other athletes that I'm, like, I'm just not going to bother naming them, but have had those whereabouts situations publicized and you can see, like, their excuses, they're just fucking terrible. It's like, it's just the same thing. Like, it's just the, it's yeah. just the same, like... Le- not laziness, but just like, how do you how do you think this is gonna fly? Like, people aren't this stupid. It's so unfulfilling, though, in a way, seeing it because you still like you, you still, still don't, don't you still don't actually know, if, don't know. if he took drugs or not. No, mm-hmm. there's and no confirmed positive test, which is like the shit thing. It's like a lo- yeah. it's a lose lose. It's a lose lose. It really is. Like you can, assuming the worst. Let's say he was just in this world doping. He gets off. Like he gets two years to just, just do the enhanced lay games, low, mm. enhanced games, come back, <laughs> or Cash or in. just like lay low for two. And he's twenty seven when he yeah, gets he's back. really young still as yeah, well. He is. I was shocked. It's I thought uh, he was a lot older than that. No, he's to young. be honest. Yeah, he when he I came saw how young he was, young. I was like, damn. It's it's just hard because I don't. Know. It's like I mean, none of us take drugs, so it's really hard for us to I think get in the mind of someone. I do. <laughs> so maybe you can explain this to us. <laughs> but it's like so hard because. On one hand, he's like a competitor that we've like like lined up against before, and just like kind of a person. And so, I think you wanna you wanna believe and be optimistic, but then it's just like the suspicious stuff. And then it's like, well, yeah, if someone did take drugs and they want to seem clean, I would probably say exactly some of the things like that he's saying. Try to be an eternal optimist and like be like, oh well, he's competing. I've been in races where I've seen him, like drug testers have come and grabbed him to do testing. Like I've seen him get tested. Like, did you you see him, Peter? Didn't see him pee, but I saw the guy with the the, the clipboard come over, and then Katia chucked a fit in Brussels, and then me and Stewie looked at him and like were like, "Dude, why are you like everyone gets tested?" But I think he was getting tested a lot. Everyone does get tested, but the whereabouts thing Lies. showed that he was getting tested a ridiculous amount. Mm-hmm. Well, not a ridiculous amount. That's the wrong way to say it. He was Just getting tested a lot. lot. Yeah, a lot more than uh, than I get tested. Yep. I think was it like twenty eight times in a year or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thirty out of competition maybe. That's not 30 including out of competition. Uh, yeah, it's not including where I get at races. I get like two. <laughs> I guess I'm not as good as him. Well, we're gonna start Coffee Club is implementing our own whereabouts. You guys have to keep me reported. <laughs> uh, Are you taking out I'll urine as well? Yes. Our samples. Yep, and then uh, Gus will do a smell test. <laughs> and if he if he sneezes well, or throws up, podcast. then it's a sign. I wish I knew more about the number of the length of the the band. Why? Why is it two years versus one year? Yeah, who got one year? We were talking about Coleman, Coleman right? Coleman. Christian Coleman got one year. But I think maybe because they, is it because the Frontier tried to appeal and then didn't? So it's some? to do with it's to do with the degree of fault that they deem you at. Mm. And so Katia looked pretty bad on a couple of these because he tried to like what's the word? He tried to like make it seem like. Um, he had done the right thing when he clearly hadn't. I think, like, for at least one of them, he went in after and changed his whereabouts to, like, what would have been correct. And then he's like, no, look, my whereabouts are correct. And they're mm-hmm. like, no, at the time it was not correct. So I think he did a couple of uh, not-so-smart things, which they don't look very kindly on that. No. Whereas I think if I think if it's a more clear-cut case, I think they can just give you one year if they think, like, if they think you were more, like, hard done. I don't really know how they would exactly like decide it but i think yeah if they seem like you were less at fault like then they'll just give you one year if it was like maybe for an example um you i don't know say your mum's in town and you go out for um sizzlers <laughs> and you like do it all you can eat buffet and you feel really sick and then your mum's like oh you can come like we'll come back maybe have a drink watch um telly tubbies or something and then you're on the bed, and then you like pass out and fall asleep, and then you wake up, and then drug testing came, and you just say, "Oh, shit, I, I forgot." And then you just tell them what happened. Oh, that sizzle! I was going to. And then that happens. That happens three up. times. I, I that, think that's like that's yeah. a one year. There's a clause that's with a water. <laughs> when you say sizzlers, they get it. <laughs> they know. That's yeah, I always thought sizzlers was just like a hot dog place. What is sizzlers? I have no idea. <laughs> sizzlers? It sounded like such a specific situation. <laughs> I feel like this must have happened. Sizzlers is like a all-you-can-eat buffet they used to have in the US and then they got rid of them because um, because it's unhealthy. That can't be the reason. <laughs> oh, no. I think it's maybe because of COVID or something or maybe like they just lost, like lost a lot of money or something. 
I don't know. Or if, if it's a Siddhartha's, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a Chuck E. Cheese, like if it's just somewhere you go and you eat a lot of food. Wherever you like to go with your mother. <laughs> yeah. To celebrate her being or in town. Wherever you take your mum out for dinner. Well, yeah. I mean, my mum is a big fan of um, Red Lobster. <laughs> she loves is there Lobster. a Red Lobster? I heard they have good biscuits. They have great biscuits, yeah. No, my mum's not a fan of Red Lobster. She she hates all uh, establishments like that. Red Lobster sounds terrible. Mm. I can't imagine going. Well, see, I don't like seafood very much, especially like you like shellfish. shrimp, though, don't you? Let's shrimp's more. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's not get into it. So, like, that is my like that is going to be my least favorite place, just generally, but also just like a a chain seafood place because you know seafood. I feel like has to be so fresh. Mm. And you also want it to be like who, the ocean. Okay, this is my serious question: Who orders? I can't remember what it's called. The fish sandwich at McDonald's. Fish fillet. Fish fillet. DJ Khaled. Really? Yeah, like, he orders it a lot because he, he posts on his story because he's. Uh, I don't think he can eat. I think he maybe it's because like fish is like a big. I think he's. I don't know. Maybe because he's. I'm not saying because he's Muslim that he eats fish, but I know that like people like eat <laughs> fish when they don't want to eat like a burger was, or something because it might have bacon or something. I don't know. Was that his Travis Scott meal? Like, did he get a DJ Khaled? <laughs> DJ fish Khaled. Fillet of- no, I think his Travis Scott meal was like when he um he was doing he might have done some sort of thing for for chilies. Ch- I'm a chilies man, just for the record. Applebee's like is pretty chains. good. They have do- Dollaritas. Yeah, hey, I'm a chilies guy. You're chilies guy. Yeah. I like chilies too. I'm I'm a, I'm probably close to. I mean, I know George is a is a massive um, raising canes guy. Yeah, George loves raising canes. <laughs> is this true? Yeah, I've seen no, George, but they but they don't have weight but, service, just dr- like drinking the sauce. I feel like they're not in the same category as Red Lobster mm. chili, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a t- they're a table of Applebee's. Well, it's just a diff- apples orange. You know what's fr- freaking good? Waffle House. I heard that place was terrible. Hotly debated. Well, I like Waffle House because it it think it makes me feel like I'm in like a 1970s. When diner. have you gone to Waffle House? Uh just like <laughs> in distant, distant freaking Texas. One time I just yeah, went to Waffle so. House. They're open 24 hours, aren't they? Yeah, and the and the waitresses they are so nice, but the coffee's yeah, nice. not very good. Mm-mm. Big shocker. <laughs> Absolute yeah. shock, yeah. I was looking around, could not find a Lemazoka machine. It was disappointing. <laughs> so, was um, back to the uh, whereabouts thing. How do you feel about, I feel like everyone always talks about the retroactive, you know, uh, the records and the results. And I know Luis was like mm. posting mm-hmm. some stuff and it's kind of, it's especially heartbreaking for him because he goes back to, compare, you know, goes back Mario to also fourth. Goes back to his last test as opposed to his last, his third missed test as opposed to his first missed test, correct? Yeah, I think so. So, it's so like it went October, back to like October. Which is just after. Also, sorry, just before we get yeah. into it, I'm so impressed that he like just said fucking and kept racing <laughs> when he knew he was about <laughs> to get banned. Like that's, that's a certain type of ballsy, I don't know. But maybe he believed he could appeal. Like yeah. it's at one point, maybe he thought he was going to be able to race appeal. under protest. That's a hard one. That's such a hard one though, because yeah, it's like he didn't fail the drug test. So well, it's it's mm-hmm. like for me, it's a lose lose because I think it's a win when, like for example, the the Shelby situation, she tested positive for a prohibited substance, she got the ban. I think that's a win because that's what drug testing is about. But Shelby got banned. <laughs> yeah, no, she's back thing. actually. Well, she'll be back soon. But like that 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 process, you're like, okay, that's a process, and she's found with this substance in her, and. This is the ban. It just makes sense. When it comes to this whereabouts stuff, it's like, yeah, it's like he's been tested, what, 30 times? And then the three times he's not tested out of 30, he gets a two-year ban, but he's not actually tested positive for anything. So every time he gets in front of a microphone, when he comes back running in two years, he's going to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I never took drugs. Like, Wait, it's, yeah. That's See, the hard thing because like people, people are just still gonna, not going to like, people are still like, going to be like, not believe him. But but, there, but there's a reason for that because the, the counter argument to that is that Maybe those three times he had just taken drugs and then mm. he purposely evaded those tests. But that's the, mm-hmm. the shitty thing is you just don't know. Yeah. But you have to have the system in place. Yeah. For that reason. For that reason. Yep. I agree. And and but that's the thing is like if you're, it just goes back to is like he's been so good for quite a while now, and if you're at that level, you have to be so fucking on your whereabouts. You have to be so on it. You have to be very very careful if you're taking any kind of like antibiotic or anything that you like. You check. You check. Make sure that's not on the pre- like. You just have to be so on that stuff because like you can just ruin your life. Yeah, and that's, that's something like you'd think, think that Mocha T would be smart about, particularly being somebody that I think a lot of people have been scrutinized against. He would be very smart about 
his situation. So then seeing that, it's like, well... Especially once you miss the first one. Then you're like, all right, if I go get my shit together. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. 100%. It's just, yeah, it's it's not good for the sport. You almost yeah. think like, or uh, my conspiracy brain is like, I'll take the whereabouts instead of the other band. No, that's like literally, that's that's literally, literally what people yeah. would do. You would you, you game it to get the... That's like what people would do, you play. assume. Yeah. But that's why, that's why, like, back to whole this whole gray area thing, there are some people who, if you have a whereabouts band, like, like mentally, they'll treat that the exact same as, like, uh, as you test a positive for drugs, and for good reason. Like, because that is the, why the system is in place for people that are trying to, like, you know, yeah, evade the test or whatever. Like, it makes sense, but... I'm just saying, like, personally, I don't, I don't quite necessarily see it like that, but then it's so hard because it's not like I'm going to be able to individually judge every person who has three missed tests um, and be, like, do my own little uh, assessment of if I think, like, they mm. took drugs. I don't know these people, you know? Mm. But, yeah, so I so a lot of people do, like, treat them the exact same for those types of reasons, and I get it. It's just hard to know how to feel about it sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm all in on the advanced ca- in <laughs> advanced ca- well, this is my this is my advice for Murkatia. Don't take drug, don't take any more drugs. Uh, I mean, I don't know what your situation was before, but just do the enhanced games and say I'm not taking any of these drugs, and just keep running seven twenty five for the three k, and you'll win. Mm. Like, and smart. prove to the yeah yeah. And if you aren't taking drugs, you get to prove. I guess you could still it doesn't to everybody really prove. that the enhanced games won't fix yeah, the sport, but it takes down the enhanced games. So. And you'll make a lot more money, apparently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a uh, unfortunate situation mm. in the sport. It always is when the drugs get involved. So yeah, is there anything else race wise we have to talk about? Oh, we do have to give. <sighs> we are running. We'll go through these ones a little quick. Shout out to Grant for the twelve fifty one. Very very impressive. Five days after Milrose Games, cranking out last three k solo. I reckon he's going to be in pretty good shape come the 10K, which I believe is his next race. Your DNS was a big shock. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that, that was funny. I was like, it's just for context for everyone. I was on the start list for this Boston uh, race. And when did you find out that you were on the start list? <laughs> when I saw Chris shout. <laughs> that's when you found out? Yeah. That's yeah. how I, that's well, how you, I found out. you were a headline... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's how I found out though, because I had toyed with the idea of doing it after after the previous BU five k, and then I had decided to commit to Milrose and not do the five k. But I guess my name never got scrubbed from the list, and yeah, then I saw Chris. It's good PR. Three, yeah. I think we should keep. <laughs> you should keep doing that. races. We should, we should keep DNSing and races. Stay, stay relevant. <laughs> will they? Won't they? It's good uh, for the new cycle. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Mokatia will do. Stay relevant. <laughs> we just keep interesting. this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but then it'll be a DNS. Yeah. So um, that was the five k. Um, shout out to the Puma boys. Yeah. <coughs> Another team doing Magic Diva and uh, well, Luke Rowe. I guess he's Alex. What? Alex Rowe? No. Wait, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll check. <laughs> Shit. You really confused me there. <laughs> Isn't that his name? I thought his name was Luke. <laughs> I'm really such an idiot right now. <laughs> we both just said no, completely different names. <laughs> Luke is a Puma person. What does that mean? Luke Mar. Who's like that? My friend. No, he's he's like an athlete manager mm-hmm. within Puma. That it might be thinking about Luke. No, so I think I'm guys, thinking about Luke Rowe. Do you guys get manager coffees <laughs> that you're Jack, like a manager now? Jack, Jack Rowe. Rowe. It's Jack Rowe. Who's Alex? Did we just make that up? Did we just say two completely random names? Yeah, it's definitely Jack Rowe. I like that we came to that at the same time as well. What the heck? I'm looking, I'm looking. How did we do that? Uh, who are you thinking? I feel like we're thinking of real people, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Too we're both people. idiots. Too many runners, but congrats to those guys getting the standard as well. Always good to see people getting it done, clocking in some 1304s, just squeaking under. Very nice to see. And then... We kind of we didn't get to cover it last week because it was awkward timing. I think on the day that the podcast went out, the Mori Plant meet was happening down yeah. under, and just like last year, it seemed like pretty sick meet. Yeah, confirmed. Jack Rowe, thirteen oh four. Patrick Dever. Patrick Dever. Two yeah. Brits. A couple of Brits getting the standard. Uh, Mori Plant meet. Ollie, what do you think? Fantastic. I think um, they got a like. Uh, this is like the one thing I think with it is that as an Aussie, 
we have such good freaking track and field athletes, but we never have like a really good meet, like a really just a banger meet once a year. And I think this could be it. I think this could be the meet that like really just starts to to keep that momentum going because we had Jake Whitecastle there. We had a few other Brits there. Um, we had some other people come in. The sprints weren't as exciting because Fred Kelly wasn't there, but my boy Rowan Browning got the dub in the 100 and the 200, which is awesome to see. Um, Stewie freaking probably had the one of the coolest races I've seen from him in a while where he actually held off a kicker. Usually it's the other way around for Stewie, unfortunately. Usually he's like in the lead and somebody out kicks him at the end, but he looked really good. Cameron Myers looked amazing. 3.52 was the winning time. I think Cameron Myers would have won if he didn't run into the back of Stewie. I, I think Cameron was... I think Myers was a little bit inexperienced. He looked the best with 150 to go. Yeah. <clears throat> I think he was just inexperienced. Like, he should have just been able to get around earlier, maybe. I don't know. I think but it was that White Castle, White Castle went to the outside, so I think Cam was like, all right, I have to go to the inside. And then he ran but, into but Stewie. Stewie didn't, didn't leave it open for him. Didn't open the door. Which it normally opens up. I loved the commentary. Just... Heralding Stewie as the king of King Island, mm. like the whole race was so good. Do you, do you that's think his, the that's his actual title. like mayor of King Island gets annoyed by that? <laughs> Apparently, I, I, I bet that you, in the next few years, Stewie will become the mayor of, of it. I'm, I'm like guarantee. Like he's probably he's like a hometown celebrity. He though. hasn't lived so there for like King Island. Years. No, he hasn't. He's is it like an Toronto. island off of Tasmania? Off yeah. Tasmania. Apparently, so Tasmania is an island, and King Island is another island close yeah, to Tasmania. Yeah. But Stewie went to school in Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. He went to boarding school, I believe. And Stewie's like lived in Victoria for like years. So he hasn't so been there for a little, like living there. But, but King of Kyle Island just sounds so good. Stewie said that the people that go to King Island mostly are like they put on this golf course and all just billionaires. I think it's a, yeah. Probably and then he ha- his family has place. a farm. Yeah. But he'll probably become the mayor in a couple of years, maybe. It's awesome to see him run well. Um, Claudia, uh, the OAC Oceana superstar. She ran 159. Pretty amazing race. Australian uh, under 20 record. Yeah. Took down a lot of big names. Like our best. Cat yep. Bissett. Meter runners, so yep. Crazy. Pretty incredible race. What was really cool for her is that she, it was her first time running a PB in the 800 since she was like 16 years old. And she had like, she obviously such a crazy fast time when she was 16. It was either like two flat or two or one. I think maybe two flat. Uh, but it's just like when you run a time at when you're 16, I think you expect to like continue to PB like the next week. But to see her stick it out for a couple of years or however long it was and then get a big break breakthrough is awesome to see. I mean, she's been making big waves in the 1500. She's been improving a lot in that. Mm. Uh, I can't, What was her time? She's already run the Australian under 20 record on that as well, like a under four or five. Young. So she's crushing it right now. Yeah. No, it, it's a great meet. Um, I think the Oceania crew had a good had a good meet. Oh, we see Oceania? The other, the guy ran 353. Was that probably just butchered? Jesse, Jesse Hunt, Jesse Hunt. Hunt. Jesse Hunt. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's a great, it's a great meet, and it's good to see it's continuing. Um, and I hope a lot of, a lot of Kiwis there too. That makes sense, I guess. which is cool because it's kind of just like the big Oceania meet. I mean, the there's no way Kiwis will ever host track meet <laughs> internationally. They used to. You guys, you That's guys, pretty fucked up. You guys, <laughs> but I mean, I'll be they honest, you guys to. never host host anything. They used to be the cool grass ones when the sixties. <laughs> Like Andy, well, Andy well, meeting was well, actually yes, talking about actually, going there for a meet. Yeah, Andy it was raced super there. Super windy. Andy raced there. I watched. I was. I, ran, well I ran at the same meet. Yeah, I was at that nationals. Yeah, mm. he just won. He like just outleaned the Kiwi guy. Cool. That's but a crazy timeline thing. Like seeing each other, having no idea. Mm. Be so you'd be working together so closely. <laughs> that is weird. Actually, uh, yeah. George and Andy work really closely together <laughs> in the gym. Actually, it's kind of weird, Tom. <laughs> to be honest. If I was Jen, I would watch out for that. But yeah, Andy and Andy and George have a very special relationship. All right, enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just from from the start, like I think when when George saw him out lean, that Kiwi for He's the win, like, George is like, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a part of that make. man's life in yeah. the future. And then look where we are. We have a podcast. Yeah. And Andy's our manager now. <laughs> what is Andy? Operations? No, not anymore. Yeah, Jack of all trades. He's our he's uh he's the one that um. That what's the word? He's the one that represents us in the company and fights for us. Mm. Would you say he's in? He's, he's the boss of Dathan, or is Steve the boss of Dathan? Like, who? Where does Dathan? <laughs> where's Dathan fit in that hierarchy? I'm trying to think. It's a great question. Because I don't know where Dathan fits. Because he's kind of like his own. I thing. guess he's outside it in a, in a yeah. weird way. Yeah. Which means, yeah, I don't know. Like, who does Dathan? When, Dathan reports to Steve. I guess. Whenever Dathan eventually comes on this podcast, we can ask him. Yeah. Or Andy. He's which, refused. Good God, man! Not going on that podcast. Yeah, we can get the the download and the uh, 
in the mechanisms of the corporate structures. Episode two hundred. Episode two hundred. That's what or three hundred. Is are they running more races down there? Like is Jake is White Castle running yeah. again? Oh, Must be. so exciting! He's racing like uh, Sydney. He's racing. I don't know if I don't know if it's a Sydney Track Classic. I think he's racing a, a big fifteen hundred meter race at Bankstown against like Cam Myers and stuff, yeah, and nice. probably Jay Edwards. I imagine. Yeah, I think that's maybe this week, or I'm not sure. I just saw it. Are we standard attempt? Yeah, I think we would it is. imagine. I think it is. I think it's called the Road to Paris fifteen hundred or something like. <laughs> like I literally it has journey like to yeah. <laughs> journey to gold. Yeah, so it has some of those names. Journey so. to green and gold. I'm so sure they'll be getting off. Just it. just follow Jake's. Uh, YouTube channel for updates on that. I was going to say, uh, I think Plank. that's probably the best info for that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, is there anything else that we need to touch on today? Did we miss anything? So, Any like other championships, Spanish champs. Go ahead. Um. Well, I I guess with Spanish champs, like Mario went in, looked pretty like got through the for the heat to the final, and it it was a pretty interesting race. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't see it, but it, I'm guessing it went out slow, and then he got clipped at the last second. Well, uh, it, no. it would, he kind of like. How do you say it? Adele Mich- the Michal, Michal, how do I, is it? Michal? Michal. You can call him whatever you want. Oh. Adele. It's never, Adele. It's never, it's never stopped <laughs> you before. Adele Megatron. Um, <laughs> <laughs> took, took the win, right? He took the win. Correct. He, he kind of ran away with it, and then Mario got clipped at the line. Like it, it did seem. That Mario like wasn't really paying attention a little bit to like, oh maybe he was just super lactic. Like I just don't know. I haven't really spoken to him, but Mario just didn't have a great race. Yeah, end of third, and then like that's super disappointing because like he's going to Worlds though, so it's alright. Yeah, but like I feel like any race like that is not great. But no, obviously not. He would li- he'll like bounce to have back won. though. He's a freaking he's a gladiator, isn't he? He's a gladiator. <laughs> maybe he hasn't been watching that enough lately. I think that's the problem. It's been just it's way too long since he last watched that yeah. movie. As soon as he watches it, he's gonna be back back to where he's. You guys wait until number two comes out. That's gonna change oh, it, yeah. change everything. Is number that two's, number two's about him. <laughs> <laughs> Mario's actually in it, but we had to keep on the DL. Yeah, that's that's it. Someone, bleep that out. Bleep that out. Number yeah. two coming out this year. Do you guys know? Uh, don't. I don't know. Fully know, but I'm sure it's coming out soon. Isn't Denzel Washington? Oh Is he the gladiator? It's not just like old, overweight <laughs> Russell Crowe. <laughs> That'd be sick. Bring him back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't Old know. overweight Russell Crowe on a South Sydney jersey. Yeah, love the to sword. see it. Yeah, love to see it. Well, if that's everything, Tom, thank you very much for joining us, coming on today, Mr. Manager. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. This has been episode 125 of the Coffee Cup Podcast, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye bye. Boys from Coffee Club.